C4. I think with the... I was going to say we might not get the timeout of uh, structure. Ooh. What's queen e7? Now, wait a minute. Isn't this a funny position? After this, can he really stop that? Knight here, I guess he could try. Oh my god. What's going on here? These are 1750s, you said? Is that what you said? Huh. Jeez. We try to save our buddy here. Let's go in. I'm going in. I got to rescue Saving Private Ryan here. Get him out. Get him out. Knight here. Knight here. I'm trying to rescue him. How do we save him? We can go queen here in order to play knight there. Hmm. I think the way to get the knight out is a little more convoluted because knight here, rook there. We're still not rescuing him. Knight there, queen h5. God damn. So we have to play for this. We saved him, I think. I think. We'll stop him from playing d4. I think we all know Black is destined to lose his queen here. It's faded. Um, take this. It has to happen. It's looking less and less likely though. Oh, maybe, okay, so we'll bring the rook here so that the knight will want to move to guard it. Oh, the knight does not want to move to guard it. That was my own fault for assuming that. Ah. Ah. No, we have to get the queen somehow. He doesn't seem to be falling for anything. We have this bishop, but how am I going to get this queen? That's what I want to know. We need a queen blunder. He's going to be careful with this thing, though. Oh, there we go. Got him. There we go. He wasn't going to make it out of that game with, without blundering the queen, that's for sure. Good luck, Chuck. C4 again? Okay. I'll try to keep our, our structure here. Okay. I mean, whoa, that's a, that's a beast of a move. What does he want to do? Okay. Here we go. All the all the usual stuff here, I'm not gonna lie. Here, and I think I think he's interested. Let's see if he's interested. Yeah, oh yeah, he knew it. Just knew it. This guy was salivating. Knight here. Knight takes. Bishop takes. So knight h2 is like the normal, I would say, defensive maneuver. But if h5, then knight g4, and you really don't want to ever open up that. So I am thinking that we may want to bring this knight in. So let's do that first. So I'm hoping to entice my opponent with a few options. Knight e4, and you know, queen g4 to win the piece. It would have traded the queens and I would have got another piece, but he didn't fall for that. God damn it. Um, but what he is allowing is he's allowing me to 
go here. The queen only has one square at that point. Let's see. Knight there, queen, g4, king h1. I got rook g1 coming. That looks pretty good. And also knight h2. I think he still goes there. So I think we may want to do a combination. Let's take this with check. Combination of moves. Trades, of course. Why would I not want to? Check. And again, it's like, he only has pawns here, right? Can't be scared of that. Let's uh, offer him to trade the queens, which he will undoubtedly refuse. And I'd love to keep trading with him. Like, if that was a thing, can that be a thing? Maybe this? Keep trading with me, buddy. Okay. Queen e4. Oh, this is like magical. Magical. Now, believe me, I, I'm not that interested in taking, but when it comes to trading queens, even if I'm fixing his pawns, guys, I got a bishop here. I've done the I've done the heavy lifting. Jack. And I think we've done a good job here because like G4. So if he plays a move like this, for example, I'm just gonna play bishop h3 and notice how every single pawn can't move, right? So now we wanna focus on the other side of the board. It's almost like he's doubling to, I don't know, maybe break through, but there's no breakthrough. Like ev literally everything is covered. This bishop is a hero. this we have c6 which will kind of help just we can take you know everything will get traded and then we can take this oh this is even better uh, long range bishop is there oh not even gonna let you sack for it bud not gonna give you the privilege And I ain't gonna give you the privilege. Alright, good game. Good game. If anyone was curious, this opening is called the English opening. I'm sure we all got that. But as soon as black plays g6, it acquires the name, the English opening, Great Snake variation. The Great Snake. English opening, Great Snake variation. That's another thing I learned today for the first time. Should have tried queen d5. Yeah, after queen d5, I, I mean, I'm not sure that he's 100% losing the knight, but I think he is. I would have tried uh, e6. Um, he would have played queen b7, and then he has a lot of hanging pieces there, plus the, he doesn't have a single threat, so I think it's comfortable. We got our time man off. Nice. a6. Uh, sorry, a3. Continue this. Go a6. All right. We know if knight takes, we're taking with the queen. That's the plan. Okay, all queen side pieces uh, developing. I think I'm going to go knight e5. Not forced at all. Like, we could even play b4, but um, knight f6, bishop b7 would all be tremendous moves. 
But I'm gonna go here, just keep more pieces on the board. I feel like that's a bit trickier for my opponent to handle, basically. Um, I think we'll go here. Discards that. Knight takes, we just go queen b8 after taking. G4, got me thinking about this, not quite possible. I think we'll start with h6. If h4, he's not fully renewing the threat, that's important to remember. This does not scare me one bit. In fact, I would love to get my bishop on that diagonal. Bishop here looks like, uh, it comes with a threat, which who doesn't like the threat? Yeah, and I think now we may want to do this. Um, knight f3 is great. Bishop a3, you have to just be careful of knight takes b5. It's just a common move there you want to watch out for. So now I could go here, but I think once I get the knight to move, the whole point is that I'm ready to go here. And anyway, I would say bishop a3, <coughs> it does work sometimes, but in general, bishop a3 is kind of not as good as people think. Like, people are under the impression bishop a3 is like an insane tactic, but it's often relatively unimpressive. So, it's important to remember it doesn't save the day. Um, let's go ahead and take this bishop. I think we can do this move now. There's this, which I'm just coming to terms with. Queen takes c3, queen takes king e7. And there's no way to stop mate from what I can see. So, I think we can do this. <laughs> Gotta be careful there. Bishop b2 and queen takes was also fine, but I think this move works. He can give two uh, rooks for the queen. Oh. Or he can get mated. Or he can get mated. GG. That's a nice time on off game for sure. Um. Yeah, fully developed on the queen side, as we know. Knight f6 is the natural move here, but sometimes I like to play for uh, knight e5, just because it leaves more pieces on the board, and without this exchange, white's often sitting there wondering, like, what the hell do I actually do? So sometimes I do this, you know, maybe against lower-rated players, um, but I think the most serious move you can play in this position is just knight f6. It should be seven. 95 is always an idea. H5 I do like as a move. Um, and the reason that this E5 move doesn't scare us, as I've always talked about, when E5 gets played, you need to have a square in the center. And here we do. This is not scary for us. We like this. This is great for black. This is a really nice end game. Our bishop's super strong. We can play F6. We can trade these bishops if we want. I actually like keeping the D in E pawn, so even though D6 is tempting, it's much nicer for black to play F6, use the G file, and imbalance the position. Because your king going up here with this wall of pawns is really nice in an endgame. So bishop C5, F6, use the G file, push the H pawn. It's a good, good position. This, there's no way white has an advantage here. The first thing to remember about Sicilian is as soon as you get to an end game in the Sicilian, you're pretty much not worse. That's just how the Sicilian works. The, the black structure is innately better. That's just the facts. All, almost all end games in any Sicilian are better for black. Of course, if there are other factors, like the thing can swing in either direction. But the point is, if everything else is even or unchanged, simply the structure, black is better in all end games. Right, these pawns can't really get mobilized, f6. And I don't mean better like winning. Of course you can still get outplayed here, but comfortable. Like as in you should never be afraid of it. <coughs> I like this end game though. Um, rather, I like this game. I thought this was instructive. Knight f6, like I said, we're okay with e5 because of this. And knight e4 should not scare you. First of all, here we have an immediate win on the board. 
but them like hunting your dark squares like this, as long as you have this bishop, you should never be scared of. I did this, uh, knight f6, we're not, not afraid of this. h6, g5 was a really bad move, and at this point, we're just, we're already bad. Black's already, already comfortable. So, what's the future of the light squared bishop? Well, chicken pants, if white doesn't have a pawn on f3, your light squared bishop is amazing. That's a, that's a big burden for your opponent to have to leave the pawn there right? That means when I put my knight here, if he ever gets tempted to play f4, which he may, I move my knight away and all of a sudden that bishop's amazing. So first of all, this bishop often combines to give a checkmate in other variations. But the bishop is putting pressure on the center and white playing f3 to blunt your bishop means that what's white doing for the rest of this game? Tell me. Because the main plan for white is f4 e5 or f4 f5. But if you're telling me white has to leave their pawn on f3 just to make your bishop bad, what's white doing for the rest of the game? There's no c4, the c file is yours. a4 is sometimes an idea, but we always play b4. And as we saw in this game, g4 is possible, but that f3 pawn becomes very tender afterwards. So we saw here how quickly it fell. So I'm just saying, it's not that easy for your opponent. You, you can be like, oh, my bishop has no future, but think about what your opponent, what's the scariest thing that white can do to you here? What's white's plan that really bothers you? Because for me, the most aggressive plans for white usually involve f4, e5, or f4, f5, right? Start attacking your position. But if white can't move their f pawn, then I'm, truthfully, I'm not that scared. Put your bishop on b7, it'll always be good there. It's never a problem. It'll either prevent your opponent from pushing that F pawn, or they will, and you'll have a big target on E4. But yeah, the opening is based on having the bishop on B7. It's the great snake variation. We know this one now. The Great Snake. Man, people love doing this. And it's hilarious because there's no, like, it's not like I'm fianchettoed here, right? I'm trying to understand, like, what's the big idea? Knight e7. That does make me think of h4. I'm not going to lie to you. What the heck is Buddy up to here? Jeez, he's, he's really got me wondering. Okay. Expand in the center. F6. Holy cow. All right. He's up to something. He's sure up to something. Okay, let's try to maybe open things up a little bit more. At least uh, we'll offer. Offer this idea. Maybe he'll start thinking about it a bunch. You know, it'll occupy his brain. That's what I'd like. F5, so he wants to play E4, clearly. That much we know. I definitely wanna play pawn takes so that when he plays E4, I have the D4 square. So I've got that in my mind. Let's go here. Egg. Baby, it's, it's gotta be. <laughs> We're gonna have to sack here. I said we wanted to play pawn takes and I basically meant to do it. So I... At the position we've got, oof, I think it's like, just have to do this. This is a must do, especially after the bishop took back. It's like, this feels, feels correct. Let's check in. 
on up. <clears throat> Throw another check in soon. <laughs> I'm about to be down two pieces. So we'll see what the heck's happening here. But <laughs> I absolutely meant to take. I know I got a good position, but like, that good? Aren't these guys insane? Like, what what's going on here? Who are these people? There's a lot of respect here. I don't have a GM title or nothing. Aren't we losing? No. White's crushing here, I think. Takes here, King F7. Like, probably I can just take. D6 also looks good. But remember, the queen can't take back, right? So let's say I take. Pawn takes? I mean, you're getting killed from all angles there. I'm going d6, bishop, rook. I'm down a piece, but look at the quality here. It's not, not even close. Not even close. And knight takes here. We're taking, going rook f1 check. Like, you just don't have any defense. Dead here. Now, in my opinion, he should stop knight f6. So I thought bishop g7 or like knight d5. I think he has to stop that. He allowed it, but then all the pawns start rolling. All right, e4. This is what we're here for. Is a3 the new theory? Everyone's doing it. Like, this is a line, but it's weird that everyone's playing a3 first. Okay, so we've seen this game. This is actually identical to a game we just played. Is this the same guy? I think last time I played knight here. Um, so, okay, this time I'll play knight f6, a different move. Let's see. Let's see how this move looks. Bishop g5. So he's moving his piece again and he's threatening to take and i wouldn't even say that that's yeah, i wouldn't even say that's a threat to be quite honest with you like i'd be more than happy to to have that have that capture happen bishop g5 is a weird move so i'm pausing because i feel that something's up Maybe not though, at least not for now. All right. Whoa, no way, no way, no. This cannot be a thing. This cannot be a thing. I don't buy this. <clears throat> Queen could go to either square. Like, my king is not getting mated here. That's the weird thing. Probably I'll go back. It looks safer. So knight d6. I mean, I'll just go king e7. Knight takes, bishop takes, guards the pawn. He gave me the most valuable piece on the board. He basically gave me full control over the dark squares. So, he better have something real good here. He also has to notice that. B C3. Okay, knight a5. This square is covered. His threats are starting to run out. Put it that way. Now it's time for my threats. My threats are check. <laughs> Those are my threats. <laughs> Get him out of here. So he went for it, uh, went for it here. Maybe I should have gone to b6 because it would have immediately made a threat. Um, so perhaps queen b8 was not the most accurate. He went knight d6. I think he should have played queen d7. Maybe knight d6 is fine. 
But there's no problem here for me. Because knight here, I have rook c7, which covers it. And the reason I wanted my queen on b8 was I saw this variation, and I wanted rook c7, but if my queen was here, I would have gotten mated. Whereas, if I had realized that I actually had threats, then I would have known, wait a minute, that move is not even scary because of this. But I was so focused on the double attack that I wanted rook c7, and so I wanted my queen here. But either way, the sack definitely wasn't uh, concerning. Okay, we get another win with this same line. It's interesting, we're seeing more people castling here, and I truly don't see this variation that often, normally. Eighteen seventy-five. Let's put this timeout off to the test. We're getting a lot more main lines. I think interesting variations. Let's attack the pawn. Okay, it takes, and we do have some options here. So, B takes is basically the move. I will say sometimes you can play this line, but. Not here. Let's go here. E5, we're be very happy to see. I'm kind of happy to see that because of Queen A5. Um, which we could do here. I want to take on E4. It's not quite possible. But the thing is, Queen A5, Bishop D2, I'm not actually not getting what I want there. Like, it's a reasonable line, but we're not actually doing that much. I think I'm just gonna go here. I think this is the best. Even though this is tempting, the bishop comes back, and yeah, here, I feel like I'm laughing to the bank. I've got uh, dark squares, like under, fully under my control. Let's start with rook b8. You never know what kind of bad things could happen to good people here. Like rook takes b2, queen c3 is already a fairly serious um, option, in my opinion. Okay, queen here, we can already take it. Bishop c5 would have been a great move as well. I thought he would play queen d2 though. I mean, I have options, but this is a very good one. So we're up, material, the king is moving. This is definitely not what my opponent wants. So let's just get to safety. We'll be able to develop our bishop like this and play d5. I think uh, d5 first, just open open things up, right? Open things up. Bishop a6. And, oof, at this point, I feel like rook d8 might win. Takes, rook d2, king there, rook c2 no there's queen b8 hmm. hmm yeah not quite okay we need we need some other uh some other move let's say check this should do it yeah um so at this point, bishop takes and queen a1 is quite convincing. That To me, that just works. But personally, I, I just can't resist queen. I don't think I can resist queen e4. Queen e4, king here, bishop takes. We only win a piece. Yeah. We should take the rook. Queen e4 is a nice move. But a rook is better than a bishop okay and now these moves can basically be pre-moved of course we're looking to offer a trade of queens
It's all in the checkmate course. Exclamation mark course. Exclamation mark course. I had a checkmate exactly like this. It's all in the course, baby. And it's the time out of, I'm telling you. Great opening. It's starting to work really well. We're getting the Sicilian War. Hope you guys are appreciating these 1800 games because we're getting a lot of main lines. Oh, look, he moved again as if like I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> e. We go C4 with white. I'm gonna set up our timeout off here with the white pieces. The great snake is, is checking in again. Should be two castle to keep it more like the um to keep it more like the time out of basically i would love to see that move that's exactly what we get um and the reason that i want to see that move is because i kind of want to see this move as well that would just be the most normal follow-up so we're gonna play d3 not that e4 was an immediate threat, but if I ever play b3 and open this diagonal, e4 will be a threat, so. Let's go for b4. <clears throat> the nice thing is when someone has a, uh, has a Fianchetto set up, that you can feel free to let them pin you because you can always attack them and they can never go back. Then you go, then you play g4 and you just win the material. So I always like playing against this setup because it means that this pin it will always be irrelevant. Just h3 and they have to go back or give you their bishop. I want to go bishop here, but at the moment I'm hanging a pawn, so I'll be playing b5 probably, or bishop b2, maybe both, yeah. Okay, let's play h3, but yeah, I think I'll play b5 here. The knight right now doesn't have great squares, like knight d8's kind of bad, and knight a5 is way offside, so. All right, he wants to do that. I've been saving this b5 move for a rainy day, um, it's unclear to me if this actually works. It is a loose pawn though, so it's the first thing to check. Yeah, if we go, if we take everything, he's got to defend it. It's not bad for me, but I do feel like this is more principled, although takes bishop f5. Bishop d3, it might just work here. Let's do it. You know, he he might be doing this. Maybe we go knight g6. It's a center pawn though, so I don't feel too bad taking it. Takes, um, knight takes. Knight takes, I feel like that's that's okay. Let's take here. I'm threatening this, so I don't think my knight is hanging. Now, we definitely have to move this thing. Knight back to c4. And if he ever threatens g2, bishop f1 should cover it. So let's go ahead and trade this piece off. Of course, we want to bring a rook to d1.
check. I'm happy to trade queens with him, as he very well knows. Queen here, bishop f3, but also bishop f1 covers everything for me. Let's just keep pushing the pawns over here. Okay, let's go like this. Push the bishop all the way back. Might go to e4, but I think it's more likely to go there. And now if he takes me, he can't bring his other rook over the d-file. So this is him about to lose control of the, over the d-file. He takes, I'm gonna take with the queen, not the rook. Rook takes allows him to challenge again. The queen takes, takes over firmly. And then my queen will invade. It's a really common thing, you double the rooks. And then when they take you, you actually take with the queen because now they can no longer challenge. If you take with the rook, like a lazy guy, then they go rook d8 and you take queen takes and all of a sudden he's the one that controls the file. That feels weird. Okay, it's probably gonna go there, I can only assume. Take, let's bring our rook down. So we're hitting the bishop, but I'm actually probably about to go here and trade for the bishop. I'm just gonna have a think. I can force it off the diagonal here, which might be valuable. I'm just gonna go here. I think it's simpler. Well, it's simpler because he blundered, but my plan was then to go rook b8, rook b7. And basically he can never trade and I have four pawns here. So I'll just make a pass pawn and win. It's good to remember, really common thing. Like, so if his queen was on e7 here, like let, let's just talk about the d file for a sec. Um, let's play bishop here and queen e7. Right? So as black to play here, the way to claim the d-file would be not to play this because it loses your f6 pawn, but let's say rook here. Now, of course, white can bring the bishop back, but let's ignore the bishops for a sec. Rook d6. And if I take, I'm actually gonna lose control over the d-file because now the rook is coming here and that's two pieces that control the d-file and there's only two for white. So I'm imagining a position where these bishops don't exist. Forget about them. So the only way for white to maintain control of the d-file themselves would be to also move their rook. So now if black takes, now black's the idiot. Now black loses control of the d-file. So black doubles, and if white takes, of course they lose control. So you double rooks. And now both players are, are doubled. You know, who actually takes control of the d-file here? Imagine that there's no bishops on the board. Who can actually answer that question? Who takes over the d-file here? Again, ignore the bishops, they don't exist. It's, what is it, black to play? Yeah, black to move. Who takes over the d-file here? Somebody will take over, by the way. Forget about the bishops. Who takes over the d-file? And somebody will, because at some point, if I have like, if I have like three things on the default and you have three things, someone's about to lose a rook, right? Whose move is it? It's black to move. Again, please ignore the bishops. Please ignore the bishops. They are not part of this exercise. Okay, everyone is saying, oh no, there's a divided group here. So now that you've given your answer, how? Of course. You wanna say black takes over how? So Captain Evans has the most complete answer. And it, it, the answer is simple. You take, and it's a race to see who can put their queen behind their rook. So black goes rook d6 now, does not take. And the white queen needs to get here. And so the idea is here and queen d7. So if white tries to like get behind here and black will go queen d7, and again, rook d3 is not an option, ignore the bishops, white would have to take and black wins the default. 
So it's a race who can like get behind the rooks. Now here, neither side can really get behind both rooks. So it's more common that you would trade one and then bring the other one. And then from the start, let's say here, if black, basically you have to notice whether the opponent's queen is actually guarding the square that you're trading rooks on. Because if it's not, then in a position like this, both sides are incentivized to move their rooks. If it's white to play, rook d2, and I'm looking to take over the file. Instead of rook d2, I'd probably want to play rook d3, but it's similar. Imagine that it's white's move here. White plays this. If black takes, you lose the file completely. I have a queen and rook, and you can never take it back over. So I play rook d2, and as black, you might go rook d6. Again, dumb for me to take. Now I lose the file. But I'll go here, black will go here, I'll take, and then I might go rook d3 to play queen here. But guess what? Black still takes over the d-file because they play queen d7. Remember, these bishops are not there. So even if white goes first, black does a little bit better there. So okay, let's say we didn't play rook d2. We played rook d3, a little bit smarter, right? Because now we're not being a dummy. We're getting our queen behind our rook in one move. Much better. Rook d6. Takes. Okay, we lose control of the file. After rook d6, how do we do it? Here, here. Well, wait a minute. What about takes and rook d3? Oh, it still doesn't work. Because queen d7. So you see black is the one taking over the file. Actually, if it's white's move and if it's black's move. It's kind of weird to think about, but it's true. If you ignore the bishops, black for some reason takes over the file. Weird, huh? Right? This is much different than the previous position. So at this point, we're at a standstill where like, neither player really wants to trade because it actually helps the other person, right? So if white trades with black, then black's queen is one move away from getting behind the rook. Right? And if black trades with white, the exact same thing happens. So now both queens are kind of rushing to get behind the rooks. So I know it's slow, but both sides are really trying to accomplish this. This is technically what both sides are trying to do. And obviously before this stuff happens, we might see exchanges. But that's that's really what's what's occurring here. So that's basically what should be happening um, for both sides. If black plays h4, and white doesn't do this, they will lose the file. It's a weird concept, but it really comes down to your queen controlling the square where the pieces actually are. Because imagine that black's queen starts on e7 and it's controlling the square where the rooks are. Now, white can't even, like, there's not even a discussion about rook d2. White can't even do everything we were just talking about because black says, okay, wait, what? You're just stupid. <laughs> now I take and I just take over the file immediately. So there's no, there's no rook d3, there's no rook d2. So there's no way to actually take over this d file as white now, unless you also play queen c2. And then if black plays rook d6, well, that's not very smart. Because now you'll take and go rook d1. So black would have to take and play rook d8, but then white's gonna play maybe rook d2 and queen d1. So you get to this position and now it's a standstill. Nobody wants to take the other person's rook because it helps the, the rook get over and up and the queen behind, but also nobody wants to move their rook up because then you'll take and just bring the rook over. So now you're at a standstill and that's why there's not really anything either side can do. You can trade, but you will technically lose the file here. Whoever 
takes the other person's rook is actually going to be losing the, the d file. How long could I talk about this? Probably not much longer. I think that was the final point. Because when the queens are here, they're not covering these squares. That's a whole separate story. And then when the queens get here, that's a separate story. But once you've seen the queen not covering and then the queen covering, especially knowing that the idea is to get the queen behind the rooks, I think you pretty much got it covered. And obviously the control of a file depends on uh, how many pieces are on the board, right? So here, why did I play rook d2 in my game? Because I noticed that the queen was not covering that square. Now, the reason that I didn't play rook d3 and I played rook d2 comes a little bit from the fact that queen e4 is a move that threatens checkmate and also hits the d3 square. So it might look like d3 is a much smarter move to double the rooks, and you're absolutely right. But the reason I didn't choose that was because, hey, this is a chess game. We do have bishops on the board. If these bishops were not here, I absolutely would have played rook d3. It's smarter to go as far up the file as you possibly can, because then it's easier for your queen to jump behind it in the future. So the only reason I did this is because, hey, there actually are other threats to deal with. But I knew that if he took, I would take and play rook there. He went here. Now we doubled. Now it's unpleasant for black because he can never move up the file because I'm just going to win his rook. And if he ever takes me, I'm going to take. So now we've basically we've won the default here because we got our rooks doubled before he even moved his rook up as one, uh, up one square. So he's going to lose the default here no matter what. There's nothing he can do. And he decided to take. And then we take with the queen, not the rook. Right. Even though we could still win the default here, I'd rather own it with the queen and rook rather than just own it with the queen. So then we can invade. E4. Okay, well, we know what we're playing. E4, very bold. C3, and I like to just push. Keep your life easy. One of my favorite things to do, g6, and they think you're gonna fianchetto, but you, you hit him with d6 next. Doesn't always work, but these are moves I'm gonna play anyway. A lot of people after this, they expect bishop g7, so they get their next move ready. And the reason I like to play d6 is because I really wanna get this. And if I go here, here, and then play d6, usually people will play h3 to stop it. But I found that by playing g6 and then d6, they expect that, so they make a move quickly. And then I get to play my uh, bishop g4. So I've been uh, been enjoying that move order. Knight's about to show up here and take back on f3. I don't know how psyched I am about that, to be quite honest with you. I'm actually going to take this now, which looks weird. But I want the queen there. I actually don't want his knight to show up there. So let's do this. Knight a3, we'll have to hit him with a3, or a6 rather. Assholes. I think the queen is really weird there. I would be more annoyed by a knight, to be honest with you. Okay, what's this move all about? As Yasser likes to say, I'll fall for it. Bishop g3, knight h5. I'm hanging on to this pawn here. I mean, I've got it ended. Or so I thought. Or so I thought. All right, well, this is attacked. Knight d5 hits the bishop, but then bishop g3, and I feel like the game continues. The game, however, does not continue after knight h5, because now you can't maintain the pin. So you're going to have to take me or something.
Well, I feel like he kind of did it to himself. I, I didn't do anything too special here, did I? He played e5. It's his own fault. He sacked the piece. It's his own fault. I was just an innocent guy trying to get my setup. But I will say, I like the setup where you give away the bishop for knight. And it's like, me playing bishop g4 is a good feeling. I'm annoyed when they play h3. You know, I'd still do the exact same moves, but I'd rather have this piece off the board. It's just easier to play. Then you just worry about the dark squares only. I thought he was going to play knight e3. I thought this was a much more logical move than what happened. And after this, I was either going to play e6, which I thought was, okay, interesting, uh, or knight e5. Because knight d5, okay, maybe a little annoying. But knight e5, normally white doesn't want to give up um, a dark square bishop. It doesn't make a ton of sense to give it up. White has the two bishops. The dark square bishop is white's better bishop. So you almost never see an example where they want to do this. So knight e5 is a safe move to play even though we get these double pawns and we want to play e6. We never ever want to play a move like e5. That's gross. The general rule should be followed as much as possible. When your opponent has two bishops and you only have one bishop, your pawns should generally go on the color of the bishop that you don't have. So light squares. One time, e4. There we go. That would be fitting. We gotta get the time man on. Okay, bishop b2, a6. We know that's our next move. b5, we're gonna stick with this. Rook c8. And oh, the time man off comes in with a quick KO, and that's why you don't play f3. And Chicken Pants was worried about this pawn structure. Oh my goodness, look how bad our bishop is! Look how bad this bishop is. We're up a piece, though, because bishop c5 would knock his socks off. Okay, well, I think uh, I may as well continue the pillage. Let's take another, uh, another piece here. Here. here I don't mind playing e5. The weakened square is a light square, which I control, and uh, I'm up a piece, so <laughs> I definitely don't mind doing it. But yeah, I might consider something like e5 and then d5 just to uh, blast the position open. The reason I say that is I have to break the pin on my queen before I can play d5. But once we get d5, we're pretty happy. Trade that. Ooh, okay. That's a risky looking move. Getting the queen. Looking for some sort of knight takes g2 or anything like that. Don't see it exactly. There's bishop c5 to take there. That's really specific though. Yeah, don't really like that. Keep it nice and easy, nice and simple. Okay, takes. I don't want to take with the queen because we do lose our e pawn, so I will take this way. And I think we're going to be able to defend everything. Let's go e4. If pawn takes queen e5, I think we're going to be able to simply recapture. Bishop c7 as well threatens mate, so like queen d3, bishop c7. And if you go there, I will take. I know that the queen can't, I mean, this move is terrible for so many reasons. This is the type of move I just sit here and he'll resign, right? 
This move is quite suspicious. You're losing for like 70 different reasons, my friend. Has to be resignation. Just, just let him sit there and think about what he's done. He'll realize eventually, he'll apologize, he'll resign. You know, <laughs> gotta let them reflect on what they've done. Yeah, he did hang the whole ship there. Well, that's 1900 in the time on off. That's 1900. Personally, I mean, I already like the opening. Obviously, I'm showing it to you. It's my, it's my, Favorite opening, it's the one that I play the most as black. So you already know I like it, but I'm, even as I'm doing the series, I've been liking it more and more as the series has gone on. Like early on, I would say the time out of, it would be E4, uh, C5, and then Bishop C4, right? This would happen all the time. And I was saying at low elo, I love this opening. Like we're just killing people. It's such a killer to this Bishop C4 nonsense. And then later at 1800, I think it's come, it's resurged again. I just think that it's like crushing until 1200. Maybe it's just a good opening, nothing amazing from 1200 to like 1600. But after that, I feel like it starts to crush people again. Cause then people start playing main lines. So you get tons of openings, tons of main lines, no nonsense, none of this Bishop C4. We saw a ton of main lines today and people were hanging for literally everything. like. So many mistakes. But my favorite is that it handles this until like 11, 1200, like nothing. Like you should be crushing this open.